Larry O'Connor here, 5 o'clock hour. We will be on standby for the President's Coronavirus Task Force briefing. Uh, coming up at the bottom of this hour, you remember that story about the guy in Arizona? He and his wife took the hydroxychloroquine. Well, he, they didn't take it. They took fish tank cleaner. And he tragically died. She survived. Turns out she was a big Democrat donor, and she was blaming the president for it. There's more to that story. Alana Goodman of the Free Beacon did some digging around. This was, I mean, it's starting to look like a Murder, She Wrote episode. Like they sent Hercule Poirot out to Arizona to get to the bottom of this. I'm, I'm not saying there's foul play. I'm just saying there are questions that still need to be asked. And Alana Goodman is asking them, and we will get to her coming up in 30 minutes. Also, Governor Hogan of Maryland putting forth his plan to get the economy back open in the free state. And we'll speak with the Secretary of Commerce of Maryland coming up a little later in the program as well. Right now it's Fridays, it's four, that means it's time for Ann Coulter. Ann, are you done? I'm feeling you're done. I'm getting the sense that you're done with all of it. (laughs) What, done with the shut-in? Yeah, it's done with the shut-in. Yeah, I mean, I don't really understand this <laughs> this hysteria over the the barber shops opening in in Georgia. They did a lot of studies on this, which ones could be open. We've all been in lockdown for four weeks. How how did we get the coronavirus? <laughs> if that doesn't kill it off, so if these are customers you know and everybody's wearing face masks, who is exactly passing it on to whom? Since both the barber um, or hairdresser and the customer have been home alone for four weeks. Right. Um, They're taking proper precautions. And the way this is being treated, uh, you know, if, if the New York Times and therefore NBC, ABC, CBS decided... Eh, this isn't so good for business. Let's all go back to work. They could get everybody totally calm going back to work. Mm-hmm. It's it just it, I just realized today what enormous I mean we've all all known what enormous power the media has, but boy they can keep these panics going. Yeah, and I think they are. I mean I guess we'll see with Georgia. Um, Georgia is is a warning <laughs> in another way to anyone who wants to be loyal and defend Trump. Um, Governor Kemp can now join the club with. Jeff Sessions, Steve Bannon, Breitbart, Milo Yiannopoulos, um, other rock-solid loyal defenders of the president whom he sells out for a momentary political advantage. Well, do you think the president sold out the governor? Do you think he said, listen, from my mind and the people who are advising me, I think it might be too soon, but he's the governor. Let's see what happens. I mean, I, maybe I missed no, it. He was I- the one saying, let's get back to work. States are going to be doing it at different times. Right. And the governors who take advantage of that, and, and he turns around for a momentary advantage and attacks him. is an attack. Oh, it was definitely an attack. Oh, I think this is a mistake. Yeah, it wasn't what you said yesterday. I'd rather he attack Cuomo. I mean, did you see the story about it? The one thing we knew about this virus, Ann Coulter, was that the people who are over 70 years old and also, oh, by the way, God forbid, if they're in a nursing home, they are the most susceptible. And meanwhile, Cuomo's administration actually sent people who were positive for the virus to nursing homes. Absolutely right. If Trump had done that, they'd be they'd be trying him for murder right now. That's right. The worst possible right. thing the government. I mean, the government, various states, state and and federal governments have done the worst thing you could do from the beginning. Um, I have man- maintained probably half of us have already been infected. Um, what you need to do is is lock down, protect the nursing homes with with the National Guard, protect the immunocompromised, and let the rest of us go about our business. Um, Suddenly, the next thing you know, they're closing down all outdoor activities. Do not get exercise. Do not go outside. Do not go to parks. Do not go to beaches. Um, Meanwhile, study after study after study. Oh, sunlight and fresh air reduces the transmission of this. Worst thing you could do, the the main venue of transmission of coronavirus, of this Wuhan flu, is being indoors 
Who ordered us to stay indoors? I mean, not indoors if you're by yourself, I suppose. And if you only have, you know, one or two other family members, um, probably not a big risk. But a lot of people don't. A lot of, a lot of people are being squished in together. They try to go out for a nice walk in the park or just take their kids to play t-ball or go fishing. And the government tells us, um, no, go back to your home so you can spread coronavirus. You know what's amazing to me is they, they seem to be really effective at patrolling neighborhoods and parks and beaches, and they send drones out and they clear everybody out. But every time we talk about taking care of illegal immigrants in this country, they say, well, what are you going to do? Round everyone up and send them back to their country? <laughs> They're pretty good at rounding people up right now. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a great point. They're also not particularly good at rounding up criminals. The crime rate... Right. I mean, New York City is starting to look like <coughs> Death Wish. Yeah. Are you, uh, are, you, are you going outside, and if so, what kind of mask are you wearing? Or do you refuse? Um, well, the odd thing is, I'm a big mask wearer from way back. Um, I travel my, in my normal life. Yeah. I travel a lot. I give speeches. I used to get a lot of colds, not, you know, bad colds, but, you know, two or three a year. It really, and it was always right after flying someplace. Also, you know, I'm at events, I'm shaking hands, getting close, signing books. But I, I, I started wearing surgical masks, just your plain old, um, you know, the cheap ones that they say, oh, this doesn't do a thing. Um, I've been doing this for like a decade now, and I, and I never get a cold anymore when I fly. When I fly, I wait until I'm seated. I don't look like a big dork in the airport. But once I, I mean, there, these pictures are all over the web because liberals thought this was so hilarious, I guess. But as soon as I'm seated, I put on the mask. And the main thing it does, which I knew from the beginning, I guess people are finally starting to figure this out, you notice how much you inadvertently touch your face when you're wearing a mask. Well, it doesn't matter if I'm touching my face if I'm wearing a mask. And I'll pull it down to talk to the stewards. So although I am a fan and advocate of masks, I have not been wearing masks going out because, again, because they made been, <laughs> I have been inside or, you know, largely by myself or with just a few other people who have also been inside um, for, what, it's been a month now. Yeah. I don't have it. <laughs> my, my, I have an opportunity. A friend of mine sent me a uh, uh, link to a doctor. There's a local doctor here in D.C. who uh, is actually going to do the antibody test for some people if they want to find out if they have the antibody uh, discreetly. And I'm going to go ahead and do it. I asked Meredith uh, if she wanted to. She just looked at me and said, get a warrant. She doesn't <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I'm interested in finding out. I have a feeling that if we find out we've got the antibodies and a lot of us are going to find out we do, then that's going to change that curve with regard to the death rate. And all of us are going to look around and say, what the hell have we been doing this whole time? I, I kind of think so, too, although at the moment I'm not sure how reliable. I mean, the problem is they're... they're <laughs> I don't know what we're testing for, what the purpose is. You just gave one purpose. Totally agree with that. Um, but if you have tests that give false positive, false negative, um, were, you, were you sick around Christmas, New Year's, December, January? Meredith was. The, uh, she got sick. We actually took our 13-year-old to a hospital on Christmas night. He did test positive just for regular influenza B, but then Meredith got sick two days later. We just assumed it was the flu, but it rocked her. For about six, I think we all days. got um, the Wuhan flu December, January. I, I remember remarking to a friend of mine at the time, oh, my gosh, everybody's been sick. Mm. Everybody. And it was true. I, I have lots of friends. And all of them were sick December, January. Well, that would be good news. Um, but, yeah, that would be great if we'd get the antibody test. But the main thing is I really look forward to these states like Georgia, um, Florida, and whichever one's Florida. I Florida have. seems to be charging ahead, man, and I'm I, I'm Good. fascinated to see how that works. Good. I mean, people aren't going to do stupid things. The the main thing is immunocompromised, elderly, locked down, wear masks, be very careful, have people drop stuff off. But if we really go pedal to the metal to protect them, I I don't see what the problem is. The biggest news out of this interview is, yes, that was Ann Coulter you saw on your flight. She was wearing a mask, so you weren't sure. But, yes, it was her. <laughs> Ann, have a great weekend. Great talking with you as always. Good to talk to you. Bye-bye.